Welcome back to my channel. All right, so in this video, I want to tell you guys like how I got started in the stock market. Um, there's already part one video out. You can go watch that one. I'm going to leave a link in the description, but this is part two. So, you know, when I was younger, when I was very young, I was, I was, um, when I was growing up, I used to watch TV with my parents and stuff like that. We would watch the news, right? And I would see these little stock tickers, you know, and numbers scrolling across the screen at the bottom. And I'd be like, it looked just like these at the top here. And I'd be like, dad, you know, what, you know, what's, uh, <laughs> you know, what, what's this, you know? And he'd be like, well, I don't know. You know, it's just numbers. So he didn't really know. He'd just say it was stocks. And I was like, what is stocks? I had to be like four or five or six, some, some young age. And what's interesting about that is that, um, I eventually got older and, you know, I asked again, you know, so, you know, why we don't ever deal with, like, I know you guys, they played the lottery a little bit. I used to ask them why you guys don't, you know, figure out what those numbers do at the bottom of the screen. And I don't know why I was always asking them about those numbers. And they were like, yo, you know, those are stocks. You know, you got to have money to do those. And I'm thinking like, oh, you got to have money to do those. So now I'm interested. I want to know more about it <laughs> because, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you just can't do something like that. And I always wanted to impress my dad. So you figure... I wanted to learn it and as i when i finally had access to a computer i i remember i was about 14 years old i, I stumbled across a bunch of like how you, how to get rich type uh websites and i wanted to know you know how do you get rich you know like i wanted to know how do you get rich what do you have to do to get rich and um i would find all types of you know material on yahoo and uh aol and just i was just digging and digging and digging through uh, all of these different search engines and I would read all the material. And when I would read all the material, I would, you know, I would notice that there would always be a couple guys in there that would just be like telling everybody what they should do. So they say, I got this kind of car. I live in this kind of house. So I asked them, I, you know, I asked the guy, well, what about me? I'm, I'm just black kid living in Detroit. I don't have any money. What should I do? And he's like, well, if I were you, you know, you're young, right? How old are you? And I told him I was only like 14. And so he was like, all you got to do is invest in dividends. So you start researching dividends and start buying those. And by the time you turn, uh, you know, when you get old enough to know what you just did, you, you'll, you'll appreciate it. And at the time, I had no idea. I did the research. I stumbled across. Yeah, if you buy and if you just keep buying the dividends, the, 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 the uh, compound interest, secret of compound interest i stumbled across that and i read it and i learned and i was like wow but you know the reality was i just you know i would go get a job and i would get pulled over so many times and get tickets and just be constantly in trouble with the law and constantly trying to afford life and mom's losing her jobs and i was just you know so so much going on that i can never actually save up the money in the stock market or i could have but like you know looking back at it now it's like i could have saved that money up I didn't have to buy so many bags of chips and stuff like that, but I didn't do that, you know? So we, um, I never really got into stocks until, you know, even after, uh, part one, if you listen to my part one video, I told you that, um, I ran into a guy at a construction uh, job and he was, uh, talking about, um, you know, he was friends with George Bush and all that good stuff. And he told me about how his son made him a million bucks. Okay, so from that story, that was the, I would say, the big inspiration, but it didn't, it, it wasn't the drive, it wasn't the flame. Um, the next story I'm going to tell you was kind of like, you know, I would say where, where I started to, you know, start wanting to look more into it. So I was selling real estate in the future. I was selling real estate, and there was this big... We were selling real estate in Bloomfield Hills at this point. I was selling real estate all over the uh, city in Detroit of the suburbs. I, I really never sold houses in Detroit um, because they were too cheap. And I just didn't see I was going to make much money. You get 6% of 60000 And then I split that with somebody. I was like, nah. So I only sold McMansions, like these big 500000 plus jumbo mortgage type houses. And I would get, you know, fifteen to twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 commissions working with the... Um, working with the broker that I was working with and working with the, uh, with the, uh, builder. Cause we were working, these were brand new houses I was helping sell. So 
you know, and we were selling these people, these houses to Lebanese and just different foreign people who would come over there. So, um, I would, I would have money in the, in this point in time. This was around 2006, you know, seven, around 2007, 2008. Um, but, but this is more like the beginning of 2007 when I ran into this guy in Bloomfield, we were selling, he was selling a $16 million house and, um, but he only wanted like a million for it. It's just that the values was down. He thought he could just get it. That, you know, he figured the house was worth it, but no one would buy it. So we were just going to try to do a hard money loan, borrow some money, pick up the crib for, you know, 12 million. And there would be $4 million left over to go buy, you know, three apartment buildings. That was like the plan that me and my buddy came up with. We're going to go get this house. It has so much equity. We would buy the house, pull some money out. We, we'd be able to live in this super huge house. And then we could also take money and run and go get uh, some apartment buildings. And then we would never have to lose the house. And then we can just put a bunch of college chicks in there. And then we'd be like Hugh Hefner. You know, he'd be like the Playboy Mansion now. So we were just thinking like that. So when I met the guy, I mean, we went there and knocked on his door because we knew realtors, but they wouldn't let us in there. But we went and knocked on his door. His name is Kevin. He came to the door. Um, you know, I even remember the name of the street and the house, you know, it's in Bloomfield Hills. It's called Surreal Court. So Surreal Court was the name of the property. Um, these were like estates. Like this wasn't like a street. Like I think the name of the street was Surreal Court, but it was all just his street. So you turn down the street and it would only be his house. There wasn't like multiple houses on the street. You drive down a long driveway. That was the street was named Surreal Court, which the driveway was like a street, but only it led up to his house, up a hill, and then it was like basketball court, a tennis court, uh, you know, I don't know, eight car, six car garage, some big looking thing, but that wasn't even the house. And then the house, which had wings, a left wing, a east wing, a, a north wing, a south wing, like this house was ginormous, like it was ridiculous. So we open, he opens up the door, and he's, um, we in there sitting there and we explained to him what was going on and all this good stuff. Now, the interesting story about this is that he said that the house was actually, um, not his house, but he got put on the, uh, lease. He got put on the house, his wife's house and his wife's mother's house. So basically he married a woman who ended up being super rich after he married her. He didn't know that he married her out of college. Um, they love each other, but then the mom, the, the, the sister, I mean, I'm sorry, his girl, her mom, you know, would live in London or England or something. She would fly over and then meet him and she liked him. So she put his name on the deed and said, you know, welcome to the family. And, but I'm taking the daughter with me. We're going back to England and go shopping and stuff like that. So she bought him a Mercedes Benz car. Cause he was still broke out of fresh out of college. He didn't have much money. Um, and she gave him a hundred grand. He said, now, I don't know how real or fake the story is, but it's kind of hard to, imagine that the story is not real when he's in this house you know so i could only say this would be a fake story if this was at a bar and we're talking to two drunk dudes and they're just making shit up but this was a guy who's sitting in the boss crib that's bigger than anything you've ever imagined looking like basically like bruce wayne and he's got the mercedes benz outside i'm pulling up in my jalopy and this guy is explaining to us how he got this house. And he's just like a really down to earth guy. So it kind of made sense because Kevin was kind of normal. He wasn't like rushing or anything. Anyway, he wasn't rushing me. I don't mean like he wasn't rushing. I meant like he was not rushing us to get us up out of there and getting us out of there just in case. Because I don't want people to take things I say wrong, you know, so because you know how offended people can get. So basically the dude was like, yo, um, you know, so he took the hundred thousand and his wife left. And then he told me that. He got in the Forex, he started trading currencies. And we didn't know, what the heck, I didn't know what that was. I, I had no idea, you know, up until like even last year, I still didn't know how to do it. Like I didn't know anything about the Forex market. I just always ignored it. I was never intrigued by it or anything. I just, I was more into stocks. I never cared about the money itself. I was just into stocks. But he said he took that 100,000 and he took some courses and whatever, whatever he did, he said he figured out how to do it living in that big house. He said, because he didn't have anything else to do with his time. He knew he was rich. His name was on the deed. It would never be to get him off. He knew the house was worth such and such millions. So that automatically made him a millionaire just by putting his name on this deed. So he said he knew that he needed to impress as a girl before she came back. So he took that hundred grand 
and he put it in the forex market and he learned how to trade and the guy said he traded up to uh you know two or three hundred k but by the time she got back he had already made 200 300 thousand now i really don't know how believable that is um I, 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 you know but he said that it took him six months or something like that to learn how to trade forex so you know he said that if we wanted help with that he would show me you know the thing is i never went back over there and that's because i never had the money well i had the money i don't you know i don't know why i didn't I wish he would have said, like, just come with five thousand. I'll show you how to trade forex. But I thought that I needed to have a hundred grand or the same kind of money he has. So I was I was young, so I didn't know any better. I was only like I was only like twenty or something at the time. So he, you know, when he told me that story, I was just like, wow, okay. So so because of that, um, that was the second time someone told me that trading can make you so much money. And I just was like, all right, I need to either learn this currency trading or the stock trading. At the time I was in college and this was kind of making me a little upset because I was in college for computer science. I wanted to program video games at the time and I'm trying to learn that and now you're making me interested in trading stocks so I can pay for college. So that's pretty much what happened with that. Um, and, and eventually I would go to uh, you know, register to do a Walsh College and try to switch over to finance. But then I found out from talking to some people there that they didn't exactly have like real stock trading courses that I was going to have to fend for myself. Plus, why would you want to spend a hundred thousand dollars a year, or how would you want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a degree to learn how to trade stocks when you could just actually go learn it from just reading books and co uh, books in the library and stuff like that? So, you know, when the dean kind of told me that, I was like, all right, well, I might just take that off. I might just stay in Lawrence Tech University and then just read star trading books. Um, eventually, I did get kicked out of uh, Lawrence Tech because me and one of the teachers didn't get along. And um, I didn't get kicked out of Lawrence Tech, but my scholarship ended. Um, it was a very expensive school. I couldn't continue to go. I had a academic scholarship so I was so smart that I was in there for basically for free and with financial aid um, until my parents both made enough money to where they deemed that they should help and then when my scholarship was uh, not enough money anymore okay so I'll continue that story on part three and I'll just tell you more about you know what exactly happened um, and you guys can just go ahead and smash that like button and let me know in the comments below what was the thing that got you the most motivated to want to get into stocks. And uh, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks.